Hello everyone, welcome to another Farrah Carry Guide. Today we're going to take a retroactive look at a carrier from the past. Uh, so we're going to look at the Saipan today. Picture. Now, the Saipan has been out for quite some time. It was the first premium carrier that World of Warships released. And it's, I wouldn't maybe necessarily say <clears throat> the benchmark for carriers, because that would be the Shukaku. But it's definitely the benchmark that many people base premium carriers off. So let's talk about the ship, how people perhaps consider her to be overpowered, some may not consider to that be, uh, what's unique about the Saipan, the attributes about her, and why you might want to buy her, and how you might want to use her. So, let's have a look in-game. So here she is. It's a lovely little ship, she's more of an escort ship than a full-blown carrier, but uh, the important thing is Saipan comes in at tier 7. Now we have four tier 7 ships now, due to the release of the Kaga as well, uh, later date. Now, what makes the, uh, the Saipan special? Well, she has two uh, air package setups, which you're most of you aware about this by now. You've got the stock, three fighters, one dive bomber, and then you have the two fighters, two torpedo bombers. So, what does this mean? It means you have a fighter heavy setup with one dive bomber, if you're talking this triangle of control, the dive bomber can scout, the fighters can scout, the um, the dive bomber is particularly good because it has um, powerful HE bombs that it can hit destroyers. But in terms of that, its offensive capabilities are very limited. And then we have the 2-2 setup, which is two fighters torpedo bombers, and that gives the ability to cross drop, single target attack, and get reasonably good alpha damage. The ship is more of an alpha damage hitting ship rather than uh, something that would bleed a target over time with dots. Be able to kind of, uh, now the reason why it works in the Saipan is because the aircraft are all tier 9. This is one of the only carriers where <clears throat> as its unique trait to the Saipan they actually up tiered the planes. This has some really interesting effects. The players are higher tier but the plane per wave is less so 3 to 4 maximum uh, if you have air supremacy and that only really bumps up the fighters. This is interesting because in terms of planes, if we compare it to, for example, the Hiryu, Hiryu has tier 7 slash tier 6 planes compared to the Saipan's tier 9s, the Saipan is actually very new player friendly because if you stray into hostile anti-air, because of the extra tankiness of your planes, unless you're in an up-tiered game, uh, it's very forgiving. And even when you are in an up-tiered game, you can sort of pull back uh, let alone strafing mechanics, which we'll come to later, and you don't necessarily lose a plane. Uh, as all American carriers, the fighter planes have lots of ammunition, so the planes uh, can scout pretty well, they're fairly tanky, uh, they've got good damage, uh, the bombers are fast, you know, within reason, they go 155 knots, most tier 7, 8 uh, American, German style bombers will go around 130 knots, the faster uh, variant is the Japanese dive bombers that go 161. Uh, so it's it's they're pretty quick, and you can evade enemy fighters pretty well, and you can choose your engagement. The fighters go at 178 knots, whereas the hero use goes at 162. The torpedo bombers are 129 because they're tier six. <laughs> they really do suffer. Um, so we're, the hero was the queen of tier 7s. The ranger unfortunately is garbage because of the way its module setup is. The Kaga is very powerful on the bombing side, but on the fighter side it uses tier 6 fighters. Saipan's um, two groups of four tier 9 fighters are very powerful. Now, in a caveat, because we're doing a lot of comparisons with the hero in, in random and competitive and ranked, the Saipan's fighters, um, in a straight click-on engagement, don't win against the Hiryu because the Hiryu's tier 7s have the dogfighting skill with the captain. So that is this skill right here, dogfighting. And dogfighting expert basically gives an extra 10% <clears throat> per tier. So it's an extra 20% uh, damage increase for the Hiryu's fighters against the Saipans. However, the Hiryu's fighters are tier 7, so if you have any sort of friendly anti-air, they'll collapse even faster. Whereas you as a Saipan player, because you're using tier 9s and they have a higher health pool, you can actually afford to fight inside enemy AA and not necessarily lose a plane to enemy A uh, because of the extra tankiness. So it makes the scouting far more forgiving. The strafe mechanics of the Saipan has more ammunition, it can perform more strafes. 
Uh, the uniqueness of the Saipan is that when you have planes locked off, the Saipan can exit strafe without losing a plane. This is incredibly powerful and very noob friendly because if you make a st mistake, you strafe into an enemy wave and you miss or you hit, but you're now you've strafed into enemy AA bubble, strafe immediately back out again, and you might not even lose a plane. Just a hostile AA, and you definitely won't lose a plane uh, to when you exit strafe, which every other carrier suffers from. Um, should be noted though, if you only have one plane in a wave, you still can't exit strafe, that mechanic stays the same, but you don't lose planes. And this, unfortunately, is one of the reasons why the Saipan is considered OP. If the Saipan didn't have this mechanic where it would lose a plane on an exit strafe, then the Hear You and the Saipan would be very closely balanced. The Hear You doesn't have the tankiness of the planes, but it does have multiple sources of fire and flooding. In a CV snipe me mechanic, because at tier 7 the carriers don't have a defensive fire. The Hiryu is actually stronger than Saipan because the Hiryu can kill the Saipan in sort of one collective bombing group and can kill it in one wave. The Saipan, even if you connect all six torpedoes perfectly on the Hiryu, the bulge protection on the Hiryu is higher than the Saipan's 7%. Hiryu is up at around 21%, which means it can mitigate the damage. The Hiryu could actually have pretty good um, anti-air, along with the Ranger and the Kaga. Theoretically, Kaga is even better at the long range AA. So if you've got a captain who's specced for it, um, trying to send one wave in, causing a flood, letting it bleed down, and then sending the second wave in isn't really effective in the Saipan. You want to attack both at the same time to get maximum damage. So it's one of the slight weaknesses of the Saipan. The fighters, you need to strafe aggressively to beat the Hiryu ones. You can't just let the Hiryu tag onto them because then you would lose. But the strength of the Saipan is its large ammunition strafes. One of the other strengths of the Saipan is it doesn't have dive bombers, but it has 48 planes in the hangar. Well, if we look at the Hiryu, we see, well, it's 72 planes, so clearly the Hiryu's better, right? Well, that's not quite the case, because the Saipan doesn't have dive bombers, so the 24 planes of dive bombers in the Hiryu are not present in the Saipan, so it's all fighters and torpedo bombers, and the wave size is smaller with 3 or 4 compared to the Hiryu who's operating, for example, on waves of 5 or 4. 4 for the torpedo bombers and 5 for the fires, which means that the Hiryu can have about 2.5 bordering close on 3 waves in total, if it's 2-2-2, two, 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 then you get the first set of fires, the second set of fires, and then kind of a half pool of third wave of fires. Whereas the Saipan has way more. It can have four or five, depending on the kind of the setup you have, waves of planes. So you can win the... Uh, you can wipe the Saipan, um, but you'd still have to wave fight more waves. So basically, even though you've got more planes in your wave if you're the hear you, the Saipan has fewer planes in its wave. If you both wipe each other out, maybe with AA, or you just click on each other so that the hear you loses all these planes and the Saipan loses all the planes, the Saipan has a full extra wave of planes ready to go. So there's, there's more endurance for the Saipan, even though it only says 48 planes. So it's, it's definitely got endurance. It's definitely got uh, very good hitting power. The higher tier planes are very noob friendly for the usage. In terms of statistics on the ship, the health pool's at 44,000, you know, the hear is at 45, it's a slightly smaller boat, so it really doesn't matter. The, the torpedo protection isn't particularly good, but it's better than the Ranger that has none, so six torpedo direct hit from the Saipan will kill off a Ranger. Uh, in terms of anti-air, one of the main things about the Saipan is that it does not have large caliber AA guns. Uh, one of the defining attributes of the Japanese carriers about self-defense is that um, it does have long-range AA guns, basically guns uh, which are higher than 85 millimeters. If you have higher than 85 millimeters, it means you can use the manual fire AA control. So when the carrier, this is the standard Japanese sort of competitive slash rank setup, you can boost the AA skills while having all the primary carrier skills. And you just sacrifice torpedo armor and expertise on the Hiryu and on the Kaga, which means that it's very, very powerful at 6 kilometer range. It can do a lot of damage. Saipan doesn't have that, so in that respect, <clears throat> I have a Essex slash Enterprise slash Saipan captain, and because he, there's no large caliber AA guns, we have Bofors, and the Bofors do a lot of damage, but their range is limited. I take an advanced fire training, basic fire training, just to really beef up the anti-air, so the self-defense of the Saipan. And then we also take superior armor expertise so we can get torpedo bombers turned around as quickly as possible. Don't take the manual fire control AA because it's pointless. It doesn't do anything, so there's no point in having a captain with those skills. And I, for me, I made it the Essex captain because the Essex has a fairly weak long-range AA, so I use that captain 
on the Saipan because I don't take this particular skill. Uh, I don't feel that you need concealment either because on 11.9 kilometers that is perfectly acceptable. It's a kilometer higher than what the here you might be at. Um, 11, oh, well, I'll take that back, 11.9. Uh, I'm thinking of the Shikaku, which is 10.8. So, I mean, the concealment is perfectly acceptable on the Saipan. You don't need extra concealment. If you took extra concealment, you'd be suffering elsewhere. You'd have short-range AA. And if a destroyer spots you and you are ship detected and you don't see anything around you, then that's bad. You, you need to have as much warning as possible, which means you actually want your detection range to be longer. So you know when you're ship detected by a destroyer coming in for you. Because you've, got, you've only got two bombing planes. That's 2-2. Two, two. So you have to go and deal with it, find it or spot it or ask for assistance. Um, in terms of the other module setup, 301, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, competitive and ranked uh, play here. There isn't really a tier 7 competitive scene, so the side pan may or may not be used. I'm not actually entirely sure here, probably would, but the, if you're in ranked, the 301 uh, side pan has really powerful air control in that the three fighters can, can dominate the sky, and this was the case in previous uh, tier 7 uh, meta games. However, its bombing capability with the one dive bomber is very limited, but in ranked games, the destroyer is always the most vulnerable, but most important link of a team because it's the one that can stealth into capture points and take them. So I found, because I would always play Hear You, that the Saipam would use its fighters to sort of muscle the ground, just creating a no-fly zone or kind of uh, keeping the enemy away, and then it would send the dive bomber at its own, whenever it felt like it, and only ever tried to bomb the, the destroyer because it can do a huge amount of damage. However, the damage is inconsistent in that there's a random roll and you might miss it, you might not miss it, but if you hit it, you hit it really hard. And it gives, you either kill it outright or you give your destroyers a much higher health pool advantage if they have a sort of a gunfight and duel or maybe gets hit by a torpedo. So in the rank scene, a lot of people did play fighter Saipan and compared to, for example, the Hear You, when the dive bombers of the Hear You drop the payload and then they go much faster, the Saipan's fires just catch the hero use dive bombers when they drop the payload in that sort of scouting role. It's very difficult, takes a while to do it, but if you were the hero you, you would drop the dive bombers and you'd go in a scouting role and you'd try and stretch the fighters apart of the uh, Saipan, and then you'd use your two fighters to protect your two torpedo bombers as the hero you to go after targets. So as the Saipan player, if you're playing 301, you use the dive bomb or anything that's got fire flooding and you know that's used damage control party, so you can reapply fires and damage, or you after the destroyer, plus you're Unless you think you can capture, you know, uh, those scouting planes easily, you got to keep at least two waves together and have one third wave going off and chasing, but keep two groups together so you can deal with the enemy here who use two waves, or maybe the hero has three one two. But even then, and you need to use strafe mechanics really heavily with the side pan. And if you go two zero two, which is my preferred uh, method because the torpedo bombers are quite powerful, you are not necessarily looking to go after destroyers because. It's actually very difficult to hit destroyers with the Saipan's uh, torpedo bombers. The planes are very fast, they're only groups of three, not four, and that's that extra four for the Japanese makes all the difference when it comes to ships sailing along, you torpedo from behind so the destroyer can't turn left or right, and then as he can't turn left and right you come in from the side, you, you drop torps in front of him so he sails in and he gets smacked in the side. But with only three, you have to be absolutely flawless perfect. The increased damage of the torpedo doesn't really matter because you're only going to hit with one. If you're lucky, two. But it, it's it's very tricky. You know, you can practice this, but it's just it's naturally easier with the Japanese torpedo bombers. Um, what you really probably want to do in a ranked game with the Saipan is go after big ships, capital ships, battleships. Maybe the enemy carrier, but you can't really kill off the enemy carrier in one strike. So you'd be wasting a whole bomb wave on a ship that no one else is probably going to be shooting at and you'd have to go attack him for a second wave so that's two full bombing waves to kill the enemy carrier when you could hypothetically be helping your team. Does the enemy team have a defensive fire ship? Does the, you know, or some sort of AA? Otherwise, you can actually, unlike the Hiryu who has to be very careful with these tier 6 bombers, you can fly straight in and just bomb whatever. It's unlikely you would see a Kaga as well because the Kaga's fighters are too weak. They're tier 6, let alone tier 7 of the Hiryus. So you could really muscle them, it's definitely with strafes. So the bombing capability of the Saipan is definitely to go for the bigger BBs and maybe try and clip the destroyers if you see them, but it's more of a larger ship kind of target thing. Now with that being said, um, let's just go into a game and play with Saipan.
<clears throat> so not really too concerned if we get up tiered here because the ship performs quite admirably. This is fine. Wow, this is actually really, really generous matchmaking. Must be the British <laughs> battleship release. Well, we're going to look here at the enemy team. <clears throat> we see that what has defensive fire? Maybe the Graf Spee. Maybe the Algerie. We know the Belfast does, probably. The Nuremberg might have Hydro, might have defensive fire, but I think it's just... The Bertin probably doesn't have it. Can't have it. So... The enemy team is quite vulnerable, we only have the enemy Saipan to deal with and all we're concerned about is if it's a fighter Saipan. If it's a fighter Saipan, then it's two, uh, two of our fighters against three of his, so we just need to be a little bit careful. You can actually, sorry, hover over the ship and see the comparison of the plane health, so, uh, or plane, like when you hover over the ship, it will show you the comparison of the thing and you can tell whether or not if uh, the enemy carrier is the same as you because there's not a very little different plane difference, or if there's a bigger plane difference, that means he's using a different module setup. Uh, but right now, we're just going to have to guess it. Uh, only one destroyer on the enemy team, so we could theoretically get a good advantage on the capping if I go for the destroyer. But in this instance, lots of really low AA targets that we can use our torpedo bombers on. Now, if this was a up-tiered game, and we were against tier 8s or tier 9s, same principle applies if I was playing a Japanese ship. Even though I'm using tier 9 planes, I can't be disrespectful of things like Iowa's and Montana's or, or, or that type of stuff, although you wouldn't see a Montana. Uh, you have to be respectful for high AA ships, but the, the fact is, it's more forgiving going for medium or low AA ships or clumps. You, you go in, minimal amount of time in there because of the speed of the torpedo bombers, you can get into the correct angle and you can attack from around the nose of the front. And, uh, and you can leave very quickly and you can get most of your torpedoes to connect in that the torpedo spread is so narrow that you don't have to worry about necessarily missing, it's just whether or not you lose a plane before you drop your torpedoes. Okay, so uh, we can see he's got air supremacy, he's got four planes in the fighter wave. He's only got one fighter wave that we can see at the moment, so we still don't know what his setup is. I'm gonna give a little bit of protection to our destroyer. I don't want to necessarily fight in hostile anti-air, which is why I'm not immediately gonna push in without knowing what the situation is. A little bit of patience. So there's the enemy destroyer. I want everyone to shoot him. I'm going to fly over him because I've got slightly tanker. I'm going to do a frontal strafe. See if I can't maybe catch something. If he's smart, he'll back off. Oh, hello. He's a fighter. He's... Oh, that's a strafe. Uh, so we're, there's a lot of strafing going on here. Don't forget, the Saipan can exit strafe without taking any losses. So you can exit strafe into hostile planes without any cost. So see how I exit strafe back out into him. He tried to exit strafe into me, and now I can take him on. <clears throat> in terms of the destroyer, I'm looking for him. I'm looking for torps that may come up. He can no longer exit strafe because he's down to one fighter. I'm looking at potential targets right now. In terms of where my ship is, I don't need to move my ship. Um, the strength of the side pin is the fact that you can strafe, exit strafe without losing planes. No one else can do that, so you use that to your advantage with your fighters. And with good fire micro, hey look, I've got fairly a large amount of ammunition. Still three planes left. I can keep this fighter plane out. Uh, hello. And there's that one dive bomber that the other CV has, so maybe I can do something about him. And right now, I'm going to see if I can't maybe hit the Graf Spee or this Iron Duke. And I'm just holding the alt button down to see whether or not um, he triggers a defensive fire. Now, if he turns into them, he's actually going to avoid quite a few of them. Maybe get four. Yeah, three's fire enough. Although we got some really lucky floods, he'll probably damage control them. If you're paying attention and you see that ship has was on fire and he's maybe damage controlled you can sort of trigger an extra flooding that would do a lot of damage otherwise he's been wounded and it makes it easier for our friendly ships to take him out i'm going to see if i can't try and stop this dive bomber here Approaching target. <laughs> once you strafe past it it's actually quite difficult if you, uh, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Alright, that's us happy. We got the plane that we were after. 
one thing you can do is if you are um, strafing, such as this mechanic here, if if you leave a large enough gap from your plane, you can actually do a reverse or a side strafe and it instantly locks in. So I'll, I'll show that in a, in a brief moment, how that works. <clears throat> in terms of how the game's going at the moment, we've got B, they've got, they had C, but their destroyers fleeing. Did a bit of damage to one of their cruisers. My ship, one of the advantages of having the faster planes is that you can be slightly further back if you want to be. I'm thinking where's the safest place to be? We have a lot of ships in the south, so I'm thinking maybe I can move up to one of these islands just to have a shorter plane turnaround time. I'm not going to take off the torpedo bombers yet. I'm going to wait till that fighter lands, just so that um, he can land. Right, so now he's in the landing, so now I can load the uh, torpedo bombers up. As soon as he goes into this grade setup, it means that he is landing and you're, you're safe to start uh, queuing up the takeoff. It just means that he's not waiting for the torpedo bombers to take off, which will take about 20 seconds. Um, he can land and he can prep because this whole 20 seconds of these torpedo bombs are taking off the fire is now also being prepped so it's sort of like uh, carrier management and I only lose a few seconds with torpedo bombers but I gain all that time for getting that fire back up because he has three fires don't really want to engage his fires at the moment because I need that second uh, fighter to kind of do that kind of strafing mechanics so I'll hold off in terms of targets um, Duke Algerie they could be good targets uh, it feels a bit clunky. No, if I go down to friendly planes and go around I'm watching this to see if he doesn't try and strafe me See that lock on uh, nope. Head on strafe is fine. Oh, no, never mind. It's not doing it. Ah, drifting into each other. God, this is chaos. I'm gonna try and make sure he doesn't head on me. Okay, so I'm exit strafing out while I'm strafing with the second wave. Should give me a couple of hits. Yeah, so. That gives me a couple hits. Now the second wave is going to come in and I'm going to exit strafe again so he's locked into position and I leave. Then I strafe him again. And while that's happening then we'll get our torpedo bombers now up for the Iron Duke Turk ship. And he's trying to strafe through me. He can't escape once I tag him because he's down to one. This guy could theoretically escape. Uh, I'm looking for the, the other fighter. Nothing to be seen. I can put my focus back now on this Iron Duke. Okay, call these fires back to low in ammunition. That's a good kill. Yeah, it's a bit overkill, admittedly. Uh, we see his, his last fire, but I'm actually going to slow down the stop. I don't want to get too close to this Iron Duke, um, and I don't want to get too close to that Iron Duke as well. His fighters are trying to chase me, but our torpedo bombers are okay. What I am going to do is I'm going to anticipate the strafe. I'm going to move over to one side, and then shift-click F so that the plane turns around, so it's not easy for him to strafe both plane waves, which is what he's trying to do. And if he comes any closer, I'll have him focus fired with my fires. I am going to be spotted here, so it's very careful to realize that right now, I can be shot at. And I can be shot at with HE, which is not great. So I'm probably going to go to this island as quickly as I can. Nope, I'm going to go south. I'm not spotted anymore, so I'm going to go south. I just want to be outside of gun range, because I know the, the English ships are quite HE happy, trigger happy. Um, in terms of fire control, I'm going to take off again. Uh, this north group got themselves killed, so that's why we're kind of even. We're actually down on ships. This Iron Duke is probably going to die, but if he maybe takes that one out. Uh, we'll load up all our planes. In terms of what we can attack, both these Iron... Okay, now this last Iron Duke is easy killings, easy pickings. This battleship by himself is easy pickings. We have a complete field on what we can go for and when we want to do it. In fact, we don't even need to really go that far south anymore now that our bombers are coming up. Our fighter is up, so we're going to maybe uh, make, get rid of his fighter that's over here. Clear up the space. Just so he doesn't necessarily spot us. We'll group up the two torpedo bombers and then we'll go for either of these things that's vulnerable. Now ideally I don't want to click on the plane, I just want to strafe it. So I'm anticipating his location and I just want to strafe into it. And if he's not paying attention... 
So I tagged it. Strafe. Exit out. He doesn't get strafed. He gets locked into... Okay. Well, that was laggy, wasn't it? That was dumb. Thanks, UI. No, thank, thank you. As far as I could tell, the, the plane was clipped and I was exit strafing, but because... I'll, I'll, I'll show this. If I try not to do a strafe like this, you see how the plane turns around, then it does the strafe? It's the same here. If I do this, the planes turn around before they actually attack. Oh, hold on. I'm going to try and screw it. Here. Seems a bit of a waste to go after this one particular ship. It's going to burn out, so we'll go for something over here. So, one of the things is, is, if I strafe like this, it will lock in. But if I do too close, he'll turn around, then he'll strafe. So there's a huge delay between the triggering. What you can do, however, is... You can delay it. So if I'm flying in this direction and I want to attack side along, I can just give it about this much of a gap and it'll instantly lock. Like, watch. See that instant lock-in? It doesn't fly around, it doesn't turn. I can instantly strafe him. Problem is he's right behind me, so I need to pull out of the way. That's good. Now, because he's got low ammunition, I'm going to just try and tag him so that I can bring up the second wave. I'll make it so, I can't. so I'm going to pull him out. That's weird. Yeah, we're fine. Right, we'll send out torpedo bombers now to the seat. <clears throat> There's a lot of fire micro here. It takes a bit of practice. But to get the enemy carrier is not bad, um, but we're basically outplaying them. And I'm going to turn the carrier around and go straight up through the middle just so we can get close to enemy ships. This hasn't been like a high damage game, uh, but it's definitely been a sort of a near control variant. Uh, letting us get in on our attacks, helping the team slightly, and just knowing how to strafe, when to strafe, and just using the advantages that the Saipan has over any other carrier. Now, as a noob player, you can just click on these planes, and you need to pay attention, but if you want to uh, increase your skill ceiling, then you can use the strafe mechanics, which is really, really powerful. I prefer the torpedo bombers because I feel there's more consistency in their damage, and they're, they are more accurate uh, in, in attacking lots of targets. Destroyers, dest battleships, cruisers, you name it. I can make connections. Where the dive bombers, the dive bombers might go all around it and you might not hit them at all. That's one of the trickiness of dive bombers uh, and their inconsistent. Until Warmer Gaming makes them more reliable and they're like the Graf Zeppelin. They're, 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 they're too inconsistent for forms of damage. Okay, so game is more or less won. We're at 960 points. We've done a, not a huge amount of damage. Normally I get 100k pluses on this one, but we had a Saipan who was being a little bit tricky. Uh, the enemy AA to this game wasn't particularly high, but the enemy Saipan was fighter heavy, so we had to be very careful with our fighters. We didn't necessarily have any AA to rely on on our team, so we had to be very careful and use our strafes really well. If we lost our planes, we could have totally got locked out. But in the end, we get clear skies. Three versus two, we're down, uh, but we make the difference. In terms of team score, yeah, okay, 1,200 bases, fair enough. Enemy Saipan got two plane kills. Two. We got 32 in all those duels. And we were trying to strafe each other all the time. So... With good microcontrol, you can definitely maximize the benefits of the Saipan. Um, not really much to say. If you want to use the ship in ranked, I would recommend 220. But understand that in, in 220, the hero you is stronger because it has the dive bombers to scout. And it also has the torpedo bombers to attack and it's better at cross-dropping destroyers. So where's the hero you would definitely go for destroyers or maybe kind of bleed fire dot or maybe cv snipe the saipan's main advantage is that it can brute force down big shit targets alpha strike the battleships or cruisers that necessarily don't have defensive fire because in the rank mode carriers are so rare that most ships don't take defensive fire so you can actually go after tier 7 aa ships that are running hydro because they don't know you know they see so few carriers you can get away with that um, in terms of 301, that would definitely give you maximum air control in, in a sort of rank scenario, uh, but it gives you very little offensive punch. In random games that we just saw, the problem is that while you could have air control, a really good carrier player with better strafe mechanics is going to beat you, so you sort of have to 
you know, play really well. There's a lot of macro going on, but you can scout fairly well on the dive bomb. It can do damage to some things, but nowhere near the level of the two torpedo bombers. If you've got the two torpedo bombers on the side pan, you can hit again and again and again, especially against higher tier ships, which the other tier seven carriers can't necessarily do and get away with. And you have fairly good reserves as well because of the lower uh, plane size. So if the side pan comes up for sale and you have never played carrier before, or you're interested in getting a premium American one, that's not terrible. I mean, then the side pan is actually the best carrier in the entire USCV line. The Enterprise is a sort of semi-ish distant second and then all the other carriers are kind of bad with the comparison to the Japanese ships. Saipan is actually really powerful and then it's the only carrier that has up tier planes and is far more noob friendly forgiving for the wider game of enemy AA and, and that type of stuff and, and, and the, the fact that you can strafe and exit straight without losing a plane, very forgiving to new players. So I highly recommend you buying the ship if you're interested in carrier gameplay. Um, that's all I really have to say about it at the moment. I mean, it is a long retroactive kind of review uh, on the past. Uh, so, call it a late review. I was requested by one of the comments to make this. If you have any questions or would like to know more about the Saipan or what to do in X situation, then by all means, mention me in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer you. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.